we put the legendary tactics team together to discuss what the best year in board gaming releases was. And NATO, you liked 2008. Cax, you were into 2011. I argued for 2012. But as a channel, we unanimously agree, on average, that the best year was... 2019. 2015. 2015. Well, it looks like we got some discussing <laughs> here <laughs> on Legendary Tactics. <laughs> So we've each covered our favorite year in board gaming releases and the links for those are in the description. But as a collective, we found that both 2015 and 2019 were stellar years for the hobby. And Cax, you did a short series on this. So what were the top 10 games from 2015 according to the Board Game Geek? Yeah, so according to the Board Game Geek, uh, the top 10 games went like this. Number 10, Voyages of Marco Polo. Number nine, Kingdom Death Monster. That's a huge game. Yeah, it's very big. Huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, eight was The Gallerist. Uh, nine, Grand Austria Hotel. By nine, you mean seven. <laughs> and also seven. <laughs> and at number six was Blood Rage. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. Number five was Food Chain Magnet. Coming in at fourth was Viticulture. Very that's strong. a good one. Third was Seven Wonders Duel. Again, strong. It. And second through the ages. Very Amazing. good. And of course, number one was Pandemic Legacy Season One. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Awesome games. Yeah, epic. That's right. Really. Well, if you enjoy board gaming videos like these, please consider subscribing and liking the video to help us out and keep encouraging this kind of work. We actually found that there were a number of games that we liked better. And on our list, in the number 10 spot, we had Fury of Dracula. Yeah. Number 9 spot, Star Wars Risk, not Risk at all. Number 8, Raiders of the North Sea. 7, Code Names. Number six was Blood Rage. Five, Seven Wonders Duel. Number four, Churchill. That one's a good one. We all love that. Yeah, one. yeah. Time Stories. You and I are really into that's, that one. It's great. Viticulture, number two, and Pandemic Legacy, season one. Okay, so let's take a look at our list here. So, were there any games that stood out to you in particular for 2015 that makes you two argue that this is a better year than 2019? Oh, that's, it's me. tough. It's tough. So, yeah, like I like I like so many games on both of those lists. It's kind of hard. What about you, Kai? Well, uh, for me, Pandemic Season One Legacy. It's huge. Yeah, that yeah. that game changed the way I, I view gaming. It yeah. was like industry changing. It, it, yeah, and it yeah. was like the first it, the first time I had to rip a card up it was just like yeah, this yeah. felt it just it was completely like yeah emotions you've never felt gaming <laughs> happen yeah. in that game. Never yeah. again will you get that feeling of like ooh, do I really want to rip a card? I up? can't believe I'm yeah, you're defacing yeah. like you know this beloved game right, which Absolutely. it was always treated at a certain level, and it just changed that whole yeah. yeah it changed it from a game being completely replayable, resettable to being expend an experience yeah, linear, an experience. linear and you yeah. brought the same group of people together for what was it about 16 12 to 12 to I think the seconds. fastest you could do it was 12 games but yeah. on average so it was 16, 16 to 18, 18, 18 games, 18 18 games. games. Yeah. yeah that's and right so, so that that was genre defined mm -hmm. so that's huge that that's so actually I, convincing me that you might be right right um any in particular that stood out for you um well the number two viticulture surprisingly good i've, I've always brought that game out for people and they think it's a, maybe a bit of a weird theme but it has always gone over well and a lot of times i find out later that they went and bought the game for themselves and and so that one's a real standout <clears throat> obviously we've had a lot of fun with churchill that game for is sure. not for everybody no nope. but uh for the right people i think that that's also uh, a great game and, and I, I have to mention Time Stories. Absolutely. And I know you're a fan of that. I was just about to say Time it. Time Stories, again, when I played that game, it's a disposable game once again. Mm -hmm. to, once you play a scenario, it's done. Uh, but the way you lay the cards out and it creates a panoramic picture. So unique, right? And, it, and it, for me, the people I was playing with, it was like, ooh, I want to go check out that painting or I want to go look at that right. uh, feature. And, yeah. and it was the narrative storytelling that really made it. But also so. the tension in that game. Like, that's there's right. tension that's building when you're fighting off baddies and you're rolling the dice and you're trying to actually, like, overcome yes. certain obstacles that build the game is built into the game and what behind behind each part of the about, about the tableau I just really and even the time the time countdown I just I love a lot of the mechanics in that game absolutely it was a really close call between 2019 and 2015 so the number 10 in 2019 was horrified the number 10 we had Un undaunted Normandy or air land and sea mm -hmm. for you quacks of Quedlinburg castles of Burgundy Pax Pamir second edition was the number six yep number five the crew quest for planet nine Number four is Watergate. Three, Blitzkrieg. Number two is Marvel Champions, the card Ooh. game. 
And the number one game from that year was Wingspan. So yes, now, that's uh, a tough one. I guess it's my job to convince you two that this was the best year. Can we pull these into frame? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So let's check out Horrified. Uh, this was an absolutely fantastic game uh, if you're looking for a cooperative experience. Uh, I loved how you played the different monsters. Yes. My family really liked it. Uh, really compact, nice length. I, mm -hmm. thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. Um, if we go down the list, you've played Quacks of Quedlingburg. Yes, I, I like Quacks of uh, Quedlingburg. It's, it's a terrible title. I really think it, it unfortunately does a bit of disservice because you have no idea what it's about. Right. And even if you know what it's about, arguably the title doesn't really fit. Right, um, yes. <clears throat> but it is a really neat push your luck type game. Um, cool. And I, I've had a lot of fun with it actually, with, especially with the kids, but people of any age, it's quite fun. Okay. For sure, any standouts for you? Uh, so I really enjoyed the crew. Yes, yes, another cooperative uh, game. Yeah. 2019 was the year of cooperative. Yeah. It really was. There was a lot I've yet of, to yeah. try the crew actually. Oh really? Yeah. Tried it yet. It's yeah. a lot of fun. It's yeah. a lot of it's 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 a nice light game. I've been around with a, a little bit like euchre. Trick taking, yep. Yeah, or yep. something like yep. that. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, and then it, there's missions too where you're trying to accomplish certain uh, um, objectives. There's a bit of a storyline, but it's very loose. Pretty, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty thin. But Absolutely. you know, it's there if you want to get it into a little narrative. Uh, a little narrative in this, within the story, so yeah. And One that you both enjoyed is Watergate. Yeah, Watergate's uh, a nice neat, aesthetic two-player yeah. game. Two-player game. Yep. 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 And nice push-pull, but in that game, it's quite fun. Just uh, yes. and it's pretty easy to teach, actually. And there's a lot of a lot of theme involved, a lot of history, and so it's kind of a a light game that introduces some history and kind of makes it a, into a very uh, easy, easily accessible. Kind of a mixture. Sounds scandalous. So it is scandalous. Uh, so let's pull over here. All right, the next one up. This is one that it, it's a war game in 20 minutes. Yes. It's exactly that. A lot of fun. Um, Flash, I've I could see it. you like in this as far as war I games go. Uh, Air, Land, and Sea is another quick one yeah. that uh, we're going to give a, a try a little later, too. Yes. Um, yes. With <laughs> small box. <laughs> small box, good game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's quite, a, it's quite a, a neat little game. It's one that I play with my daughter actually a lot. And uh, it's, it's one of those games that surprises you a little bit. It's a a little bit deeper than you first think. When you first play it, you're oh, like, excellent. oh, this is really simplistic, but there's a little more to it than you might uh, more meat initially in the bone. think. Yeah. Awesome. But there is one game that really carries the day for 2019. Yes, and that would have to be Wingspan. Yeah, this yeah. game, again, uh, this brought back, I think, nature-themed games. It's another uh, multiplayer solo game where you're you're not too competitive, so I find that it's a very friendly game. Uh, it's beautiful, yeah. great mechanic mechanism, and there's all kinds of um, imitation games that have come out right since yeah, this one, right? So. And expansions, it's huge. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, that's good. So the board gaming geek community also included the Tainted Grail, Fall of Avalon, Paladins of the West Kingdom, Cthulhu, Death May Die, Maracaibo, and Barrage. None of which I've played. But if you know any of these titles, please let us know which of these we should try next. So what year held the best titles for you? Let us know in the comments. So I think it's pretty clear then which of 2015 or 2019 is the best? And the winner is... 2019. 20, 29. 2015. Ah! Oh, what? <laughs> what? You guys convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> now get out there. Get gaming. And be legendary.